Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today let's talk about why you shouldn't leave your wine to breathe before serving it. But first, let's get one thing straight. We often use the term decant wine as a synonym for opening it and pouring it into another vessel called a decanter. This process is also synonymous with allowing wine to breathe. However, if we want to be very specific, decanting actually refers to separating the solid parts of the wine from the liquid and removing sediment that we don't want ending up in our wine glasses. Allowing wine to breathe is usually referred to as aeration, which involves introducing oxygen to your wine, thus expecting it to open up and show more flavors. That's why sometimes aerating can be done quite aggressively by simply turning the bottle upside down and pouring it into the decanter. But for the purpose of this video, I will use term decanting as a synonym to both aeration and removing sediment. So now let's see why decanting might just be a little bit too overrated. And make sure to stick around until the end of this video where I will also discuss two reasons why decanting might actually be useful. We should experience the wine and this is really, really why I am against aeration. Some people swear that certain wines should be opened a day before they are served but I disagree. And I will go even further and say that I would be greatly disappointed if a sommelier at a restaurant would aerate my wine without asking me first. Don't get me wrong, there is no doubt that wine changes, develops and transforms once the bottle is opened. And I want to experience those changes so hear me out. We now have these absolutely amazing large wine glasses, some of them so capacious that an entire bottle can fit inside. These glasses serve as an aeration vessel for me. Wine is not a vodka shot that we quickly drink and immediately gulp down. We talk with wine, we savor it, we enjoy it. Therefore, I want to witness my wine's development in the glass. It might start a bit shy on the nose, but after a while it will reveal more aromas, slowly entering the realm of flavor complexity and eventually toning down again. And believe it or not, if you keep the wine long enough, it can die, no matter where it is, in the glass or decanter. I had this experience with a beautiful wine from Bon Mar Grand Cru. I was attending one fancy dinner with great wine served throughout the evening, and one of the first wines was this Bon Mar Grand Cru. I liked it so much and I kept it in the glass and didn't finish it, because I wanted it to be my last sip that evening. Unfortunately, four hours were too much for it and it died. Just imagine what would happen if it was decanted. And I will quote one wine author. There is nothing sadder to a wine drinker than to discover that wine decanted an hour before dinner has lost whatever bouquet and flavor it had while sitting on the sideboard. Believe it or not, but now we are making better wine and we have a deeper understanding of winemaking processes. However, historically, when wine bottle was open, it might have had some unwanted CO2 from ongoing fermentation. It made sense to aerate this wine to remove that sparkly sensation. Additionally, there might have been situations where the wine was bottled with significant amount of lees, the yeast sediment that could create reductive aromas in the wine. Then it it also made sense to aerate the wine to remove these off aromas if possible. Nowadays, if red wine contains some CO2, chances are great that it is intentional and no one wants to remove the bubbles from it. Therefore, the reasons for aerating the wine in the first place are no longer relevant as we have fewer faults in our wines. Most of us actually prefer freshly open wine, including winemakers themselves. This is very easy to test, actually. If you're not sure whether you like freshly open bottled like I do, 
or you actually prefer the aerated one, it is easy to conduct this experiment at home. Take four bottles of the same label and vintage, naturally, then ask friend or family member to prepare four glasses of wine. One bottle should be opened, aerated in the decanter and left for an hour. The second bottle should simply be opened and left to breathe for an hour. The third bottle should be poured into the decanter and served immediately. And finally, the fourth bottle should be opened and served immediately. Now, with four wine glasses in front of you, not knowing which one is which, answer to yourself which wine do you prefer the most and which comes the second. The same experiment has been conducted with winemakers from Ridge and Robert Mondavi, and in the blind tasting they all preferred the wine that was served directly from the bottle. And the next preferred option was the wine that was decanted and served immediately. So the question arises, should we aerate the wine simply because majority of wine blogs say so? Or should we serve the wine in the way that we personally enjoy the most? full of fresh and bright fruit flavors. More importantly, even if we prefer the more aerated wine, we lose nothing by serving it without aeration. It will eventually get there. Tannins do not become softer with aeration, according to science. One argument for allowing wine to breed, particularly for red wines, is that it softens the tannins. Let's start drinking! Oh, not so fast. In order for the tannins to mellow, we should let it breathe for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Freaking tannins. As I mentioned before, our understanding of winemaking techniques has significantly improved, and that also includes tannin management. And what I mean by that is that nowadays, more and more winemakers are aiming to produce wines that are pleasant to drink at young age. Yes, those expensive wines with aging potential, those too. They want to make wine that you can enjoy at young age as much as at old age. And now, before you furiously hit the unsubscribe button while simultaneously leaving a comment that she knows nothing about wine, let me share the perspective from one of the professors of analogy at Davis University. This expert knows that reaction between tannins and oxygen is actually quite slow, and there is no way that they will polymerize and create longer chains, which is often associated with the perception of tannin softening within just a few hours of decanting before dinner. Therefore, the current understanding of tannin interaction with air shows no proof that they become softer on the palate with aeration. So these are the reasons why wine should not be decanted, aerated, or left to breathe for an hour, two, or overnight. However, since you have stuck around long enough as promised, there are few reasons why you can, or actually should decant your wine. One is for removing the sediment. Older wines and wines that have never been aggressively filtered tend to drop sediment. While this sediment is not necessarily harmful, having it in your glass or in your mouth can be quite unpleasant. Therefore, these wines can and should be decanted before serving. And please note, if you decant your wine over the candle, small amount of wine will be lost. And the second is for the presentation reasons. Sometimes I choose to decant wine at the dinner table because I like how it looks. Wine bottle poured into beautiful decanter right before it is served offers aesthetic experience. Feel free to comment if you disagree or perhaps you have your own story with the canting wine. For example, I have heard stories where sommelier refuses to serve the wine at the restaurant because it hasn't opened up yet. Sounds silly to me. If you like this video, here's another controversial video about wine storage myths.